uh, we're expecting a guest in the studio. He's here already, okay, mm. from um, Eurocare. Mm. Now, just in case you're wondering, Eurocare promotes top-notch health services mm. in Nigeria, okay? Now, this interview, actually, will discuss the guide to bar... No. Bariatric. 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 <laughs> Bariatric surgery as the most effective weight loss surgery. Hmm. Have you heard of that before? I haven't. I'm I have. looking forward to knowing more, as well as Eurocare's relentless approach to ensuring adequate control of diabetes across Africa. Now, with us to discuss this is Dr. Abuchi Okaro, who is here with us in the studio. Good morning, Dr. Okaro. Good morning. Okay. Dr. Abuchi Okaro is a consultant general and Lapa. No laparoscopic surgeon yes his special interests are in upper gastrointestinal oncology and bariatric surgery his nhs practice uh, is at the kent oncology center in maidstone kent he has a weekly private clinic at the hospital of st john and st elizabeth uh, abuchi was trained in the uk and in tokyo japan he works in a busy surgical unit of course uh, where he performs over 200 Upper, um, is that GI endoscopies? Yeah. And a um, hundred colonoscopies, 75 lap. Oh my goodness. You're going to have to help me with this word. <laughs> 75 lap colo what? Lap. Uh, it's a C H O L E C H Y. No. Okay. You know what? <laughs> Let's oh talk about no. oh. bariat- bariatric, ba- bariatric surgery. surgery. I yeah, will get used it. to that word. Tell us already. What is that about? Thank you. Uh, yeah. ba- bariatric. Bariatric. Uh, yeah, bariatric surgery okay. is surgery that's uh, aimed at adjusting things in the body, the upper GI tract, to cause weight loss. That mm-hmm. is the primary uh, definition of bariatric or weight loss uh, surgery. Okay. And that's what we're here to discuss. So, I would have actually asked, who needs a bariatric surgery? I think somebody who wants to lose weight or who has made effort to lose weight in the past through maybe diet and exercise that has uh, not been that successful or Mm. has had periodic lapses Mm. would benefit from a consideration of bariatric surgery. Periodic lapses in... Things like yo-yo waiting, okay. you, know, you kind of lose, maybe do the Cambridge diet or mm. the keto diet or mm. one of the other Atkin diet. There are a lot of diets out there. Mm. And you lose weight, for instance, um, and then months or years later, it comes back again because a lot of these diets, uh, you can't live on them for, for a long time. Mm. So it's what we would call the yo-yo dieting. Mm. Others, for instance, who have not tried any dieting but just still want to lose weight Mm -hmm. for other reasons, sometimes medical, Mm -hmm. uh, will probably have to consider, if it is an ambition to lose weight, Mm -hmm. that they can consider something surgical, uh, which is where bariatric surgery then comes in. Mm -hmm. So I tell you what, when you talk about losing weight in this day and age, Mm -hmm. you see that you don't necessarily have to be fat (laughs) to want to actually lose weight. You know, so how much weight, you know, is weight to want to lose? Yeah, now that's always, yeah, that's a very important question. I Mm. suppose everything has to start from what your weight is at Mm. that point in time. Okay. And the way to maybe give yourself some idea as to where your weight sits in relation to what we called uh, reference points would be what we call the body mass index or okay. BMI. BMI. Okay. So it's always nice to check what your BMI is, which is a very straightforward calculation uh, of the weight over the height squared. Okay. In, in meters. All right. So once you've done that calculation, you then know where you are. And if your BMI is of this sort of 28 above 30, for mm. instance, mm-hmm. on that number, mm-hmm. then you clearly know that you would benefit from maybe some sort of weight loss. Okay. If your BMI is in the obese or super obese category, which may be up to 50 or 60, then of course something is really going wrong. So I think the BMI becomes a very universal tool okay. for one to kind of gauge where they sit on that scale. Okay. And begin to ask that and question. Yeah, if I so do. let's give you a, a practical example. If you really need to lose, let's say, 20 to 30 kilograms mm-hmm. to bring your BMI into what would be considered a sensible range, mm-hmm. then you have to look at options. Now, some people will lose 3 kilograms, 4, 5, 8, but they haven't really moved that BMI down enough mm-hmm. to a safe place. Then, mm-hmm. of course, they need to look at other options. Uh, things to help them to potentiate that weight loss. And that's mm. where I think bariatric surgery comes in. Mm. So tell us a bit about obesity. You know, um, how was obesity, you know, viewed then as opposed to now? Obesity, unfortunately, 
has realistically become a, a global discussion, a global mm. issue. Mm. And I think that what we know now, which I think is driving a lot of the, d the debates and discussions about obesity, mm -hmm. as in being overweight, significantly mm -hmm. overweight, is that it has a significant impact on the body function. Mm -hmm. So let's give you a good example. Is Let's say hypertension is something we all know about in, uh, in this part of the world, very common. Mm -hmm. Now, if a patient is hypertensive and on maybe, let's say, three or four medications just to bring the blood pressure under control, and they happen to be obese, or overweight, then of course losing weight and exercising will help to correct some of that problem and maybe even actually remedy it. So that's one big problem. Obesity mm -hmm. causes uh, or is related to hypertension. Mm -hmm. Another one that is also quite common in this part of the world is uh, diabetes, mm -hmm. particularly type 2, the diabetes. So the one where you maybe take drugs and even on occasion go on to insulin. So diabetes and obesity have a very strong relationship, mm -hmm. uh, which you and I know if you want to tackle diabetes and get your sugar better and you're overweight, you must really talk about in addition to your drugs and whatever medication, you need to think about weight loss. Mm. The third one is things like joints, back pain, knee pain, uh, issues to do with obviously mobility. Uh, carrying around a lot of weights will increase the chance of mobility uh, joint issues. Um, so that's a third one. A fourth one is things like... Um, Sleep apnea, where people have problems sleeping, excessive snoring, partly because they have a lot of weight on them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that is another fourth issue. Now, there's a fifth one that is obviously very, very, very more topical now, and that is obviously issues to do with uh, cancer. Mm. Now, the World Health uh, Organization has actually classed uh, obesity as the second commonest preventable cause of cancer global. Really? Behind smoking. So wow. if you think about smoking and you understand the impact of smoking on cancer cause or cancer uh, development, mm -hmm. now obesity sits number two on that. So a lot of cancers, endometrial cancer, esophageal cancer and so on, are cancers that are related to being overweight. Mm. Another one that we really have to chip in at this point in time, actually, is infertility. Mm -hmm. uh, infertility is significantly linked with obesity. And in fact, a lot of patients who happen to be infertile, uh, who go for, let's say, IVF or so, mm -hmm. a lot of the recommendations are is to help them to lose weight. Partly things like uh, polycystic ovary uh, syndrome, which is associated with infertility, is related to obesity. Uh, and that's why I think people talk a lot about that. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can't forget the most important one is actually our psychosocial well-being. Mm -hmm. How well and how we feel about ourselves, our image culture, our drive, our ambition, some levels of depression, for instance, and uh, poor self-esteem are all related to obesity. Really, you know, the point is that obesity as a problem is actually affects the body from top to bottom, including the mind and sleep. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure how long you've been with this, you know, part of the world. But, you know, growing up, when you say someone is obese, you know, they look at someone who's short and then who's fat. You never really attribute someone who's tall and built as obese, you know. But, you know, over time, it would seem like, you know, uh, people have sort of come to the realization that obese has nothing to do with how small you are or how, you know, a bit tall that you are. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. And I think a lot of that is perception, as you mm. know. Perception, maybe stigmatization. Mm. Um, and that's why we will go back to what we call the BMI. Okay. I think that if anybody's thinking, hmm, am I uh, overweight? Am I obese? Mm. Part of it, of course, is what you see in the mirror. Mm. But I think you have to jump on the scale, find out what your weight is, then see what your height is. And you can simply do that calculation mm. uh, on your smartphone. On your phone. Uh, and find out if you are in the obese category. Mm. So I think there's no doubt that one of the most important uh, discussions or important points for focus mm. is actually the realization that obesity or being excessive your weight mm. uh, is, is real mm. um, and you know okay we understand that in the old days that when you had uh, you know a lot of uh, maybe a, you carried around a lot of fat or you were having a, a big uh, belly for the men or big hips and so mm. on for women that it was seen to be a social mm. affluent type of uh, you know thing and that's just gone now mm. it's just gone people are getting sick and dying mm because they're too fat and in fact it's a global problem okay so quickly before we go tell us a little bit about your experience you know personally you know with bariatric surgery mm. well bariatric surgery uh global so around the world has evolved significantly let's mm. say in the last 30 years mm. you know and i think what we can probably say from let's say the western uh 
impression is that mm -hmm. obesity and bariatric surgery has been is being tackled directly okay. by you know health health organizations and uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. So it is something that is very very serious. Mm -hmm. Now in Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, it's a, a, it's a big point for discussion, but it's still in the infancy. Okay. People aren't really having an open discussion about how bad it is to be. Uh, overweight and its implications in terms of body function and mm -hmm. issues like hypertension, sleep mm -hmm. apnea and, mm -hmm. and diabetes. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring that discussion to the bear, mm -hmm. bring it to the front so people can really look at it. Now, what I can say, though, from our experience, uh, my personal experience and the team in, in Lagos is that um, the Nigerians are very much waking up to the mm -hmm. fact that being overweight is not a good thing. Okay. Uh, and they are looking for uh, solutions mm -hmm. for sure. No mm -hmm. doubt about that. So mm -hmm. there is an awakening going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and partly because the media is picking up on it. Of course, uh, doctors are recommending and even family members are recommending to the mm -hmm. people they know to say, look, I think you need to lose a little bit of weight. Mm -hmm. uh, but I go back to this issue. Honestly, to understand where you are on the scale, you mm -hmm. really need to check what your BMI is. That really gives you an insight mm -hmm. to where you are on that scale. Okay. And then you start having conversations. And tell us quickly that. about the risk involved in this kind of surgery. Well, I think, you know, you really wouldn't, the risks I will come to, but I think we really need to talk about the benefits first. Because I think if you don't look at the benefits and the risks, then it's looked out, okay. looked out of proportion. Mm -hmm. So what are the benefits of uh, weight loss? And nice. they're hu huge. Okay. Um, reversal of hypertension, improvement of uh, type 2 diabetes, better mm -hmm. sleeping, uh, less pain, more mobility, increased mental activity, mm -hmm. increased enthusiasm, better jobs, less depression, emotional enlightenment just feeling well mm. feeling well you know and i can we can be probably quite clear to say that a lot of people will literally find some sort of transformation if they lose weight mm. effectively and safely whereby they really can shave time off their, their mm. years and feel younger so okay. that really remains the benefits of weight loss or bariatric surgery okay. now what are the risks now the risks are there are you with me yes but I the am. risks would be things like maybe not losing enough weight mm -hmm. If it's uh, an attempt, the other risk would be clearly not complying with things like the, the regimes, the vitamins that you may need to use afterwards. And of course, the risks of the surgeries, which mm -hmm. will include things like infections, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pneumonias and other things. Now, what is good? And mm -hmm. I think this is the bit that we must put forward as a real message. Mm -hmm. Is that because the global community, healthcare community has worked so tirelessly and hard to develop the practice of obesity and bariatric surgery. Mm -hmm aggressively that we have now have systems and processes uh, that are in place that mean really that having bariatric obesity surgery in a center that is committed and dedicated and has experience mm. is literally the same as they say having your gallbladder out or, mm. or having a having a hernia repair mm -hmm. and that's the risk that we think we need to talk in reference to some serious complications and that's okay. really reassuring so when we sit in our clinics and we make strong recommendations to patients who come for mm -hmm. you know for advice we can be fairly confident that actually in terms of outcome, real risk, that they are quite small compared to the huge benefits that are out there. So I think, you know, to summarize your question, the risks uh, are very small compared to the huge benefits. Uh, and I think that's probably an important message to make and okay. uh, point out. But I will stress that it has to be a, people who have been trained and competent in delivering the service. Okay, so we really have to go for that listener listening to you and interested in bariatric surgery. How can you be reached? Um, well, we, we work out of Eurocare, which is a hospital uh, in Victoria Island. Um, okay. So they can get us on Eurocare. We have a website there that can has all the contact information on. So, yeah, they can go to Eurocare website and uh, and, and get information, and, and we'd be very happy to so see it. So it's Eurocare, www.eurocare.com.ng. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Abuchi. Real pleasure.